If you want to keep your friends, you're never supposed to talk about religion or politics. But today, we're going to talk about both. Brian wrote in and said, how about a show on the differences between liberals and conservatives? One that's non-biased. Maybe that'll help people realize that neither side is evil. They just have different ways to try and solve problems. Sorry, Brian, can't help you there. Because when it comes to the two different ideologies, there really is no difference. Both sides promise change. Conservatives in the form of reduced government to solve problems and liberals with government programs that solve problems. Stop and ask yourself honestly, have they done it? I mean, each side has had lots of time in the majority position. So why are we still debating the same issues I can remember hearing my parents discuss when I was a kid? But if we get rid of the problems, then we don't have anything to fix. Wait, then we don't need government. Let's just make sure we keep those problems around. Political parties have a platform, but that platform is not their real agenda. Power is their agenda. Individuals can start out a political career with optimism and high ideals, but to maintain those positions of power, you need to make sacrifices. Like your soul or your career, if you hold to your morals. Right or left, you'll never see politicians vote away their power. Instead, they'll make promises to change and then point the finger at the other guys when it doesn't happen. Both sides like to make a lot of noise when the other camp has problems, but they also like to sweep it under the rug when the camera points at them. Really, when was the last time you saw politicians hold their own candidates or party accountable for things they'd said and done? It doesn't happen, and they'll never take accountability because it weakens their power collectively. Yeah, I saw a politician be accountable, and he was riding a winged horse with a fairy princess over the enchanted forest. It's a few blocks from the capital in D.C. Why aren't we holding them accountable? Because we assume they're corrupt. And why are they corrupt? Because we let them be. It's easy to see the parties in this country polarizing and the gaps between them growing broader and broader. But it's a lot like watching Nazi Germany fight communist Russia. I mean, who do you root for? They may be opposite ends of the political spectrum, but they sure have a lot in common. They're both dictatorial regimes guilty of mass murdering their own citizens. And the end result of going too far to the left or too far to the right is you end up at the same place, roughly politically. Still think those two parties are different? <laughs> yeah. But you knew all that already, and this is what you ought to know, not what you already knew. There are two groups that continue to baffle me. I mean, can you really be a rich liberal or a conservative Christian? I mean, fiscally conservative Christian? I hear both of those and I think, oxymoron. Let's start on the left. They'll tell you that we're all the same and there should be equality and everyone's needs should be met. Okay. But whoa, 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 not with their money. No, 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 no. Nothing personal, but George Clooney is one man, and one man can easily live on $50,000 a year, so it's really not that generous to give away the remaining millions. Is it? Not if you really believe in equality. Hey, it's just your fair share. And why wait around for government to tax it all away from you? If you're rich and liberal, and you believe the government's the best way to solve problems, shouldn't you just give your money to them? Right now? Yes. Give, give, give! Isn't that what you've been saying? The generosity of liberals is often touted in the media, but Oprah's big give looks pretty small when you look at her net worth. Come on, Sean Penn, put down the bullhorn, get out of the boat and start writing checks. It's time to live up to your creed and give till it hurts. Nah, that won't be nearly enough. How about give till you're middle class? Yeah, that'd be enough. What? I hear snickering on the right. Yeah, you guys are in even more trouble. You say it's nobody's business what you do with your money, but that money doesn't belong to you, does it? If you're a conservative Christian, doesn't all that money belong to God? Uh-huh. <laughs> Does this sound familiar? Sell all you have, give to the poor, and come follow me. Or how about, it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man to get into the kingdom of God. And let's not forget our favorite, you cannot serve God and mammon. Wait, what does mammon mean? Oh yeah, it's money. So in the end, maybe it's not government's business to take your money and give it to the poor. It's just your moral responsibility. You know, just your soul hanging in the balance. That's all. You can try to justify yourself saying, I give enough, but if all the conservative Christians gave what they should, there'd be no need for the liberal government programs you're so opposed to. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. You're supposed to give to the poor and needy, not just the worthy and deserving. The real problem with politics isn't the differing ideas of political ideologies or the compromises they come to. It's the hypocrisy, corruption, and near total lack of responsibility and accountability. So where do you start? Start with yourself. Hold yourself to a higher standard, and the people you elect will have to follow. Bet you didn't want to hear that. Because until we hold politicians accountable, they'll just keep vying for power, and none of the problems will really get solved. Don't unsubscribe yet. We have two more mind-opening shows coming this week. And as always, flame responsibly.